welcome to Kenzo Gaming. Today we are going to have a look at the Soviet-Korean alliance. It is a new coalition after the DLC 3 has been released. So let's have a look at it. What you can see here is that I have filled up the deck with Soviet units first and then we are going to have a look at the North Korean units which might be better for the job. So let's start in the logistics section. If we look at the logistics section, there is actually not much to talk about. You can choose any type of units you want. It's not going to have a big effect on your deck. So let's skip over to the infantry section. Now, what kind of units do we have here? First of all, I know that there are a lot of people who would prefer taking their Morskaya Pichota instead of VDV. So let's have a look at these guys. Why do I think that you should take Vedeve instead of Morska Pichota? So, it is true that Morska Pichota has more infantry units. It has 15. It has a team of 15, while Vedeve has only a team of 10. However, you should not underestimate the RPG. The greater range, greater accuracy and greater AP power is very, very big difference. You can easily destroy any kind of super heavy tank with these units. And this is pretty much the reason why you should not take the Morskaya Pichota. The difference in infantry is also not that great. Now it is true that if Vedeve meets Morskaya Pichota, Morskaya Pichota is going to win. However, if you use the combo which I have here, Vedeve and Spetsnaz, then you are going to defeat any kind of infantry you will meet on the field. So I have these guys purely for killing tanks and these guys purely for killing infantry. Also take into account that the RPK-74 has been buffed recently, which makes it much more powerful. There are also some people who prefer taking the Motostroki. Let's take the VDV and compare them to Motostroki. So here we have the Motostroki. So if we have a look at the Motostroki, we will see that the RPG is also very powerful. It's not as accurate and the range is not as good. However, it's a cheaper infantry, so you might want to take these guys if you want to have greater numbers of units, or if you think that you want to use the BMP2 or other BMP. After the DLC 3 patch, the BMP1D has become more expensive. This was my favorite unit, I was always taking Motostar K90 with BMP1D in my deck. However, with the nerf to 20, the price has increased from 15 to 20 for this vehicle. You might as well just take this, this BMP-2D because even though it does not have the grenade launcher it has better front armor, it has a good auto cannon and also a concourse missile so I think BMP-2D is a better choice than BMP-1D You can see also the side armor is better for the BMP-2D But in this deck I have two VD, VD-90 and uh, Spetsnaz. I have Igla N as my anti-air and Concourse M as my ATGM. So let's have a look if there is some kind of better anti-tank killer for North Koreans. I could theoretically choose one of these recolors rifles. Either this, Biban Chungpo, which has high explosive power, or Gong Bob Yong, which does not have high explosive power, but on the other hand it has greater manpower. It has 10 men compared to this one which has only 5. If you're fighting in areas where you cannot use your long range ATGM, then it might be better to choose one of these two guys for your fighting. This one will be better against infantry and this one will be better against tanks. Then again, I should say that this one is better against infantry if the infantry is still at long range, right? If they're maybe attacking the city, then you can take out enemy infantry with these guys. However, within the city, these guys will be better at fighting because they have greater number of units and they have also some... because they have a greater number of units and they have also a machine gun. In the open field, obviously, the machine gun is inferior to the recolorist rifle which has two high explosive power. 
So take that into account. Then we have the Fagot, we are not going to take that. And we have Eagla, which is also not good at all. Because it has only 4 high explosive power. You should always keep your hands away from these kind of things. Because the 5 high explosive power is what you need to take down planes. This kind of group of 4 of Igla and can easily take down planes. However, this one will struggle even if you have 5 of these guys. Now, what could replace our VDV-90? We have these guys, Jogukte, and we have these elite units, Jogjende. In both cases, they have an RPD machine gun, which is very bad in Wargame. The rate of fire, the accuracy. Well, if you have a look at the sheets, we show you how much damage per second they do, you will see that the RPD is very weak machine gun. But you probably don't want to take them because of the machine gun, right? So let's compare the RPGs of both units to the VDV-90. This RPG is inferior, but it has greater number of rockets. And in this case, I think we have the same thing. So they have the same RPG. Let's just have a look at first at the difference between these two guys. Which of these two guys is better? We can see that the Yukjun De, they have only a team of 10 men compared to Jacob De, which have 15. However, they have a better submachine gun. The AKS 74U has 533 rounds per minute and has better accuracy. So I believe that these guys are gonna win against the Jacob De 90. You have to take into account that a strength of 15 men does not make the team 50% more powerful against a team of 10. It makes it maybe 20% more powerful than if it was a team of 10. Therefore, if I chose one of these two guys, in shorter games I would choose the Yuk Jin Dae 90. However, in longer games I take the Jigok Dae 90. Why? Because there is also the difference of the availability. Namely, Yuk Jun De has a team of 8 veteran units and Jacob De has a team of 12 units. In longer games you will need more men, so this is the reason why I usually stick with the Jacob De 90. Another reason is that if bombs are uh, dropped at these kind of guys, then usually the team of 10 is easier to kill than the team of 15. Even if only one man survives, you can refill the team fully. And in the case of Jacob De, it's higher chance that your team will survive than in the case when you have only 10 men. That's why you should stick with this team. Now let's compare this team to VDV. What do we see here? We can see the RPG is inferior, the machine gun is inferior, but the AK is superior for Jacob D90. However, all in all, if you take the infantry capabilities, I would say that the VDV90 is going to win against Jacob D90 because the RPK-74 machine gun is stronger than the RPD machine gun and even outweighs the effect of the AK-74U. Therefore, you should stick with VDV90. Regarding the transport options for VDV, before, I would have recommended to use the MD2. However, with the recent buff to the availability of uh, heavier infantry fighting vehicles, now it actually makes sense to take the MD3 because you do not lose any of your VDV when doing that. You can see I have a team of 12 VDV90 for BMD3. Spitznas, well, always take those Spitznas. You never know when you meet some Parshim Jäger or, or this kind of units and Spitznas will mop them up. Now, there is also a possibility to choose this unit. The Gornostralki 90 are very powerful. Now, if you do not want to take the Concurs M, if you are fighting at medium range against vehicles, tanks and uh, this kind of sort of units, and you want some more resilient team, then I recommend taking the Gornostrol Key 90. 
and I recommend them to take them in the MTV helicopter. Why? Because the MTV helicopter has very powerful rockets. These kind of rockets can easily kill a team of infantry and when massed they can even take down the heaviest tanks. In my deck I don't have it. Let's continue. In the support tab, what kind of choices have I here? In the support tab, these are my standard units. I'm usually changing these two artilleries and mortars between three units, actually between four units. I recommend to have here two out of the following four units. Malka, which you take as a veteran. It can snipe down any kind of unit at long range. If you want something which can deal more damage in a wider area, you take them stop. If you want something which can respond faster to enemy, then you take the Nona SVK. Or you could theoretically take also the Vasilek. The Vasilek is especially good because it fires all its uh, shots really fast. This one is very situational, so it depends on your playstyle again. Another unit which you might take is the Smerch. I think the Smerch is self-explanatory, so I'm not gonna go into more detail here. And now there is also Buratino in the support section, before it was in the vehicle section. I strongly recommend you not to take it, because you should not give up one of your artilleries that can kill vehicles and tanks and infantry for some kind of unit which is not even especially good at killing infantry. Therefore, therefore, instead of taking Borat, you know, just take something else. Now let's have a look what North Korea can offer. As my long range anti air, I have Book M1. You should definitely have a card of these inside your deck. I know that there are a lot of players who don't like using them, who prefer taking something which is um, less ranged. They like to use Osa AKM or Tors. It's up to you. Do whatever works well for you. As my anti helicopter, anti air, I usually have two cards of something either Tunguska M or Osa AKM or Tours. Now let's have a look what we could choose if we consider the North Korean units. First of all we have the Koksan. The Koksan has been buffed in some recent uh, patch during the beta and that's why this Koksan unit is now actually a very good unit. Maybe we should compare it to the Malka. Where is the Koksan? Here it is. And let's compare it to the Malka. Should we take a Malka or should we take a Koksan? Oh. <laughs> okay. Now it is locked. Good. So here we have the Malka and we have the Koksan. We can see the spread is the same. Rate of fire is the same. So pretty much. By choosing the Koksan, you get a cheaper Malka, which has less ammo. That's a disadvantage. However, an advantage which you have when you take the Koksan is that you get more front armor, more side armor, so it's more resilient. And also when you take the Koksan, you get three units instead of two for the Malka. However, the disadvantage is slightly less high explosive power. This again depends on your preferences. Let's just say that I would take the Coxon. Then we have this as our mortar. Let's compare it to the Nona SVK. Nona SVK has less dispersion and other stats are not so important. The speed is better for Nona SVK it has slightly better armor, it has also a gun. All in all the Nona SVK is much better mortar. So I'm taking the Nona SVK. 
regarding BM24 which was very popular before I recommend not taking it anymore because it has napalm it's not useful anymore it's a waste of deck space so you should not take it you can still take the Chinese version of BM24 which is still high explosive those work really well at panicking enemy forces BM21 you should not take at all let's have a look at the anti-air now I have here the book M1 and the only long range anti-air which I can choose for the North Koreans is the Ponge 2 you can see the accuracy is shit so this is not gonna happen we have the Ponge 3 which is pretty much the Strela 10 you can see the same kind of unit but there is a unit which I like for the North Koreans and it is first of all this bug which is 2800 meter range this would be the counterpart to the Tunguska so have a look at this bug with the 2800 meter range you can fight against helicopters pretty well the advantage against the Tunguska is that you get more of them how many to get? 6 that's not that much however it's very cheap 5, 55 points compared to the Tunguska's 100 so this could be something which you want to consider so instead of having 8 Tunguskas you could have 12 of these guys the other units I would not recommend taking I personally prefer keeping the Tunguskas because the rockets can be fired even when the radar cannons are turned off so I'm not gonna change anything here This concludes our support section and we're going over to the tank section. In the tank section there is not much to look at. Again I have focused on heavy tanks because I'm playing mostly longer games. So I have a lot of heavy tanks and then I also have the T-72A which is a decent tank especially in forests and also when it's traveling ahead of these tanks to act as a meat shield. With a certain front armor even if it gets hit by a tow 2 it still survives with one point of health maybe half a health bar or something like that so this is a decent tank this is my cheap tank which I have here now let's have a look what do we have for North Korea for North Korea we don't have many tanks to choose from we have the T90S and this tank is very price efficient if we compare it to let's say T72BU we can see it's the same thing the only difference is that it does not have the rocket so obviously we're gonna take this tank but we are not going to replace the T-72BU and also not the T-80UM instead we'll compare it to this tank the 1989 tank and when we look at the AP power and the front armor and the rate of fire we pretty much see why the T-90S is so powerful so goodbye 1989 tank I'm taking you instead and what we're going to do now also is have a look if there is some similar tank with an armor of 13 or more that is maybe more efficient for the North Koreans so the price range should be about 55 let's have a look this one has 12 front armor this is not enough you must have 13 none of them fulfill the requirement so we are not changing the T-72A tank at all so this is our tank section and we can go over to recon in the recon section you can see that I have a lot of Spetsnaz group this acts as my additional infantry I also have the Spetsnaz team and the vehicle as a recon as well as the helicopter let's have a look what the North Koreans have to offer what is interesting is this vehicle it has a concourse and it has a grenade launcher so this could be something which you might want to take let's compare it to the vehicle which I have right now so 
this is locked and I'm comparing it here well there is not much to say you can clearly see why someone would take the BRM 1k in some cases and why someone would take the other one in the other cases I also know that the T55 is quite popular among players as a recon possibility and for some people it's also this PT85 now I would like you to turn your attention towards this Type 63 this Type 63 is not a bad unit it's very cheap and has a decent cannon compared to the T55 for example the accuracy is doubled it does not have good armor but the AP power is also decent so you might want to consider taking the Type 63 if you had Type 55 in your deck as a recon now regarding the vehicles there is not much to say here also the BRDM3 is very popular amongst players so you might want to take this one if you want the reason I have this one is simply because of its exceptional optics now let's have a look at our Spetsnaz this is our Spetsnaz team we compare it to the what is this Jung Chalde looking at the stats the Jeong Chalde has a better rifle and the Spetsnaz have better sniper rifle. However, when you enter a rifle range with your Spetsnaz or your other sniper team, then you're pretty much screwed already, so it doesn't matter. So that's why we are going to ignore that. The RPGs are the same, so judging by these two, you should definitely take the Spetsnaz VMF. The only reason why you might want to take Jung Jal Day is because you have the meat 4 option, it's a very cheap option. So you can get somewhere where a vehicle would not get. If we look at the options which Spetsnaz have, the cheapest helicopter is the Ka 29 TB. But if you don't worry about the price of the Mi-24, or you're fine with transporting them in some cheap thing like Ural or some BTR then I recommend taking the Spetsnaz these guys cannot be replaced by any North Korean units so there is nothing to discuss here anymore and we can go over to vehicles in the vehicle section I have a note of it's the better unit compared to Jalo what I also like to use here sometimes is the Concourse M or the Zepato U4 this Zepato U4 is very often underestimated by the enemy SU-122 is also very powerful, it has 5 high explosive power the O-62, very good flame tank BMPT and Afghanski. These units are very popular among players. So let's have a look what kind of units the North Koreans are bringing to the table. First of all, it is the ATS-103. This is a decent unit. Why? Because it has a nice range, 45% accuracy and 13 AP power. So this is a very good unit for 30 points to defend some flanks or some front line. So you might want to consider taking this. But if we compare it to the Norov, what do we see here? We see that actually for 5 points more we can have slightly better accuracy and a cannon which is turning, so... Probably you should stick with Norov. However, if you're a defensive player and you would not be using the Norov to attack, you know that you would be just placing them somewhere along some forests or hedges, then ATS-183 is probably the better option for you. There is also the Zusu 572. It's comparable to the Afghanski unit, but it does not have a stabilizer. So, yes, while this is a unit which I like using for the North Koreans, in this deck it doesn't make sense. So, here you should take Afghanski instead. Let's go over to helicopters. As a helicopter, I have Mi 28. Some people prefer to use the Akula. The reason why I have Mi-28 is because the availability is 3 compared to Akula's 2. 
you have more anti-tank missiles, you have better accuracy for your anti-tank missile and better stabilizer. Aquila is better at a slightly greater range and also one higher AP power. However, I don't think this actually is uh, good enough for longer games. So in longer games you are going to benefit more from an MI-28. It's also less of a loss if you lose an MI-28 because it's cheaper, costs only 130 points compared to Aquila's 150. So this is something to consider. Another unit which I might recommend is this one, Cocon M. For 100 points you can get a very decent helicopter. If we look at the North Korean units, then the only one which I would recommend here is... Where is it? Here it is. This one with the grenade launcher. Very cheap unit, you get many of them. And they are very very efficient at killing vehicles and infantry. So this is a good support unit, especially when you're attacking. However, if I have only one slot for helicopters, then obviously I'm not going to be taking this weak one. This is our air tab. You can see I have this seat, MiG-25BM, and I have also the SU-27M. I use them in tandem, sending this one first and this one behind, so that the radar units which get detected by the MiG-25BM and not destroyed, will be destroyed by this one. I also have a card of SU-27S, which I find is better at taking down planes as a single SU-27PU. Now if we look at our units, we can see we have a lot of recon, so if you want to have more planes, you might want to get rid of a recon unit. The reason why this one is in Ural is so that I can have some cheap units straight at the beginning of the game, which come in fast transports. As you know, I don't have any fast transports here in the infantry section. So now I have 52 points. With one more point I could buy some other plane. What could I get rid of? I could theoretically, I could theoretically get rid of the Norov. Or maybe of a mortar or some anti-air unit. It depends. Or maybe you don't need to have so many supplies. Let's just say I'll get rid of the Norov. So now I have one more space and I can choose some unit to use. What am I going to use for the North Koreans? What excels here? We have the SU-25K. Let's compare it to the Soviet SU-25. You can see it's inferior. So you should not take this SU-25K. The only advantage is that these Soviet units have only two units, while the North Korean one, you get, oh, you also get only two units of it. Okay, so there actually there is no advantage at all in taking it. I recommend using the SU-25, this regular Soviet one, if you want to use one of the SU-25 units. Another option instead of SU-27S is to use the Yak. It has also fire and forget missiles. Looking at the air superiority fighters which North Korea offers, there is not much to choose from. This will be probably the best one. Yes. And as you can see, the longest range is only 4,200 meters. So you should definitely not take this unit. And you also get only two in a card. If you had four of them, maybe I would consider it. But with two, you should definitely not take it. Now, what would be a North Korean deck without a B5? Obviously, I'm going to take it. And I have noticed that the B5 works really good with a combination of F5B. Why F5B and not the F5? Because it's cheaper and it flies at the right height. They have the same speed as the B5. So, if you have enough places so if you have enough activation points, I would strongly recommend that you take a F5B here. Why? Because you get four of them and you simply send one of these F5Bs in front of your B5s and then the enemy air defense is going to destroy this unit for 40. 
and you're going to rack up a lot of points, maybe even destroy stuff for 100 or 200 points. I can maybe also show you how this would look like. So I'll show it to you in a second, how this would look like, setting the F5P in front of your B5s, and you will see what I mean. All in all, our deck is finished, so let's have a look how it looks like. The um, ships don't matter, you can choose whatever you want. So let's have a look if this was actually worth it. I lost 5 activation points, which means here, what could I have gotten? I could have gotten, for example, a new logistics section plus another helicopter, maybe an Akula. Or I could have gotten, let's say, here, 3 vehicles. Or maybe I could have gotten another Recon infantry, maybe the Spetsnaz crew and another Akula. So this is what I have lost. What have I gained? I got a better tank, the T90S, instead of this. This is actually a very strong advantage, even though you have only two units and not four. Because I generally think that a card of this can easily defeat a card of this. Especially when you micro them well. The other advantage is that you got a B5. I mean, B5 is a new bomber, so this is a very big advantage. If this is better for you, then it's up to you to decide. If you ask me if this deck is better than a typical Soviet deck, well, what can I tell you? I somehow have the impression that the B5 and T90S is simply not enough to give up 5 activation points. However, I personally am going to be using this deck. Why? Because I think it's a little bit interesting to use this kind of units. However, I will be using this coalition for myself and maybe I'll find out that maybe it is better than the Soviet deck. After all, if you think about it, if you use at the beginning your T90S tanks, you have a strong advantage and even if you lose them, you don't have nothing to worry about because you still have your T72BU and T80UM for late game. So this is maybe a very strong advantage. So it's hard to say if the availability and the 5 activation points which you're giving up are worse than T90S and B5. Probably not, but maybe in some cases they do.